The noun planet, Miss Katz, is derived from the Greek verb planestai, to wander. Originally, it meant wanderer, a body that roams here and there amongst the fixed stars. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, aka Hembar, and today I'll be doing a spoiler free review of Fritz Leiber's The Wanderer. There are four quotes to start this. These are the epigrams. There is an excerpt from E. Doc Smith's second stage Lensman. There's The Tiger by William Blake, which seems appropriate for I just recently reviewed um, The Stars, My Destination. And there's also The Book of Revelation. And finally, Olaf Stapleton's Star Maker. So, I don't know, very appropriate, I feel like. Uh, this has a very gripping start, in my opinion. It's rather electrifying. It's not what I was expecting from a book that released about the same time as Vance's The Star King and Herbert's Dune. But this is Liber, and he has nothing if not style, and he knows how to flourish, and the beginning one here introduces not just a sci-fi story, but a horror story. There's a big dumb object comes out of space, and the apocalypse ensues. We are told um, through several point of views of different events, first from Margot Gelgorn of LA, whose fiancé is on the moon. This is somewhat in the future, as there is a moon base in Space Force, and it seems like there will shortly be a Mars base as well. In chapter one, we get quite an ensemble viewing the lunar eclipse. Chapter two gives us Margot again, along with her boo, Dawn, on the moon. Morton Opperly is mentioned, and that is a character from Liber's 53 novel, The Green Millennium, and also in his poor Superman short story. The main characters seem to be Margot Paul, uh, who is a friend of hers, and Margot's cat, Meow, in California. Later, we get Tagarishka, and also in the ensemble, are all, they're all over the world, which I appreciate, and it makes the most sense uh, not to be only in the U.S., a smuggler arming capitalists and communists in Vietnam is one I found interesting. Uh, there's multiple POV novels don't seem that common from this time period. Um, I'd like to see or look more into that to see how unique that this was, basically, for this novel. Cats play a role here. Liber likes them. It's obvious if you've read his stories. Maybe you like cats, too. Uh, it's a weird read, and the sex presence is very new age. It's also very Liber, who often explores sexual themes. Um, right? He's the fantasy sex god, after all. Uh, Liber doesn't do the best female characters. I've definitely read worse, of course. Uh, they aren't all the same character at all, which is nice, though, but they come off kind of silly, but not in any, like, purposely demeaning way. Uh, I mean, a lot of the male characters are silly as well. Heinlein is mentioned, as is Wells, Clark, Burroughs, uh, there's even a book on flying sauc saucers by Carl Jung mentioned in this one. There's many allusions to sci-fi as a whole, which is cool, and I like it when modern novels do this. So an older novel, uh, you know, then it, this novel is slightly older than my dad, so it's nice seeing it in a novel this age, because I, I don't see it very often. Uh, it's not surprising in some ways, though, since many of these characters read sci-fi. They're sci-fi fandom people, right? Which is apparently one of the reasons it probably won the Hugo Award. It's cool to also see Apocalypse Horror, uh, First Contact, and Big Dumb Object all in one relatively early, you know, mashup. I wonder if starting in Medias Res would help the story, but the setup, I think, builds this fear into the reader as things come forth. It's straight out of sci-fi, and the characters are aware of that. Um, the N-word is used a couple times by certain types of character portrayed as not very intelligent, um, but it's not used by any other characters as well. Uh, it's the first time I've read it in any of Liber's books. Uh, there's also Marijuana. Uh, maybe unsurprisingly, it was the 60s after all. Um, I will admit this one definitely felt dated at times. I mean, I say that, right? I mean, all of his books feel like they come from whenever they were written, right? There is an odd sex scene. It's not really graphic, but it's between a lesbian and a straight man right before they die, which in some ways is really silly. I think a lot of people probably would not like that. Um, there's also more science than I'm used to in Liber. Uh, the what-if kind that works well in sci-fi. Uh, the three-body problem even comes up in physiological things Liber likes, particularly the symbols of like yin-yang and the mandala. Uh, hyperspace and threats bigger than the obvious imminent ones are on the edge of the story as well, which is a very Lovecraftian hint, I feel like, that Liber play pulls off very well. Uh, and, you know, you see it in some modern world building, that, and so it's nice to see it here. But imagine this guy didn't look like it does when you look up, right? What if communication broke down as disaster set in and a cold, world, a cold war increased? It's terrifying, understandably, right? Oh, and the Wanderer reminded me some of the world ships of the Cielsen from Sun Eater, but this is not the first time I've been reminded of Sun Eater by reading the Liber story, even though I don't think Christopher Rocchio is much of a Liber fan. But the pacing is interesting. It's very gripping at times, very dull at others. I think it worked well as a miniseries, and overall I enjoyed it. 
It's the longest book I've read by Liber, and I think it could possibly be a little shorter, but overall, the roller coaster is fun, in my opinion. When he mentions Sea Gods at one point, he is very well informed. Also, the Black Dahlia killer even makes a cameo, like Jack the Ripper and Older Lit, and I really like the conversations of Paul and Tigerishka. Very weird, but poignant and revelatory. Also, the world building in them is top tier, if only a glimpse of it, right? Focus on the story is not lost here. Also, the Wanderer is similar to a birch planet, so if you like your mega structures, that's pretty cool in and of itself. Um, and here's a couple quotes. I think your Wanderers died this way. Only the Greeks didn't grow them this big. I think it's a planet. We're going to find out what ants feel like when someone steps on their nest. Anyways, Liam from Williams Lyceum. I'll catch you next time.